Want to speak real Turkish from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at TurkishClass101.com. Most people who learn a foreign language learn it so that they can one day have real-life conversations with native speakers. When you start out learning and crack open your first textbook or listen to your first podcast, having a real conversation can feel like a fantasy. When everything about a language feels new, it can be overwhelming. But this couldn't be further from the truth. While it does take a significant amount of time and effort to become fluent, having a conversation might not be as far off as you think. In this video, we'll look at three ways you can boost your conversational skills and start talking to native speakers. Number one, find native speakers and practice with them. It's unlikely you live near a big group of native speakers to practice with. If you happen to be in a major or international city, your chances may be better. Check and see if your city has a general language exchange. Chances are there could be a native speaker there who is also trying to learn another language. Practicing in person with a native speaker is probably the most interesting option for honing your speaking skills. But if you can't find anyone where you live, the next best option is to look online. Luckily for language learners, the past 10 years or so have seen an explosion in online language exchange sites. On these websites, you can search for someone who is a native speaker of your target language and is also learning your native language. The idea behind a language exchange is that you communicate with them via video or text chat, and half of the time, they help you practice your target language, and for the other half, you help them practice theirs. Practicing via an online language exchange is a highly effective way to practice your conversational skills. Number two, work on pronunciation. Pronunciation is often an overlooked skill when it comes to learning a foreign language. Most people think of a good foreign accent as a luxury rather than a necessity. But what most people don't talk about is how having a good accent boosts your listening and comprehension skills. If you can hear a sound from a foreign language and know how to make it yourself, then you're more likely to understand native speakers when they talk at normal speed, and you're also more likely to remember any new words or phrases you come across. Having a good accent means that the language no longer sounds foreign. Instead, it sounds familiar, maybe even natural. So how do you go about perfecting your accent? The best way is to break down the language into its individual sounds. Make note of any sounds that are the same or similar to your native language and of those that are different. Of the sounds that are different, spend your time practicing the ones that you find the hardest to say correctly. After you're comfortable with the individual sounds, you can start linking together words and phrases. This is where accent practice starts to get really fun and interesting. Get your hands on some native speaker audio from a TV show, song, or podcast. Play the audio back and listen closely a few times. Take note of how words blend together in speech. Then, do your best to imitate what you hear, trying to match the speaker's emphasis and intonation. Our language learning program's playback feature is perfect for this. Record yourself and compare it to the original recording. Rinse and repeat until you're comfortable with the audio selection, and then move on to something more difficult. This is how you can break through the accent barrier and really start to make the language your own. Number three, learn phrases, not just individual words. Learning grammar and individual words is great, but it's not the only approach you should take if you want to speak fluently. In addition to your regular grammar and vocabulary, try learning whole phrases, even if you aren't totally sure how they work grammatically. Learn phrases that are specific to your needs. It's a good idea to learn phrases that are grouped around a certain setting or subject, such as simple greetings or introductions, questions for getting to know someone, or traveling comfortably. You can even learn filler phrases, which you can use so that you have something to say when, well, you don't know what to say. Learning phrases like this will help you become conversational faster. You may not understand what you're saying literally, but as long as you know the general meaning behind the phrase and know when to use it, you'll be able to talk like a native. Eventually, your knowledge of grammar and vocabulary should catch up with the phrases you know. Learning a new language should feel like an adventure. There will be plateaus and periods in your learning where it feels like you're hitting a wall, but being able to speak with native speakers and have real conversations will help you combat language fatigue. After all, talking to someone face-to-face -face in a foreign language is one of the main reasons we start learning in the first place. And for even more ways to gain conversation skills, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel.
We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Want to speak real Turkish from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at TurkishClass101.com. Well, you want to become fluent fast, right? Here are the top five shortcuts to learning a language. Number one, create a study schedule and set some goals. Many language learners are unorganized. Creating a schedule allows you to free up time to study consistently. Goals give you motivation and something to strive for. Number two, make it fun. If you learn how to make your study time enjoyable, chances are you'll be more inclined to study. Watch a TV show with subtitles or listen to some music. Number three, find a language partner. This is the best way to improve your conversation skills. It will help you gain fluency even faster and increase confidence when speaking. Number four, use word lists to build up a solid vocabulary. This is a great way to build up your fluency, one word at a time. Luckily, we have all the word lists you need with a range of topics from food to love. Choose whichever language you want to study and go. Number five, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Nothing helps you improve more than correcting your own errors. You're more likely to remember it correctly the next time around. Everyone makes mistakes. Don't be afraid to learn from them. There's no magical way to learn a new language overnight, but doing all of these can really help your learning process. Bir adam ve kadın konuşuyorlar. Hangi saate bakıyorlar? Ve saat kaç? Saat kaç? Bilmiyorum. Bugün saatimi unuttum. Trene yetişebilecek miyiz diye endişeleniyorum. İstasyonun girişinde bir saat var. İyi. A. Tren 5 dakika sonra geliyor. Bu saat 10 treni değil mi? Evet. Acele etsek iyi olur. Hangi saate bakıyorlar ve saat kaç? Bir adam ve kadın konuşuyorlar. Hangi saate bakıyorlar ve saat kaç? Saat kaç? Bilmiyorum. Bugün saatimi unuttum. Trene Yetişebilecek miyiz diye endişeleniyorum. İstasyonun girişinde bir saat var. İyi. A. Tren 5 dakika sonra geliyor. Bu saat 10 treni değil mi? Evet. Acele etsek iyi olur. Bir adam, bir kadın arkadaşının kızını okuldan almaya gidiyor. Kadının kızı hangisi? Sana zahmet olacak ama acaba kızımı okuldan alabilir misin? Elbette. Beni tanıyor mu? Evet. Resimlerini gördü. Tanıması lazım. Tamamdır. Neye benziyor? Saçları siyah ve kıvırcık. İnce yapılı ve boyu ortalamadan uzun. Anlaşıldı. Başka bir şey var mı? Ona önceden aldığım bir şapkayı takacağını söylemişti. Beyaz ve siyah bir kurdelesi var. Bulmak kolaya benziyor. Tamam, ben gidip alayım onu şimdi. Teşekkürler. Kadının kızı hangisi? Bir adam, bir kadın arkadaşının kızını okuldan almaya gidiyor. Kadının kızı hangisi? Sana zahmet olacak ama acaba kızımı okuldan alabilir misin? Elbette. Beni tanıyor mu? Evet. Resimlerini gördü. Tanıması lazım. Tamamdır. Neye benziyor? Saçları siyah ve kıvırcık. İnce yapılı ve boyu ortalamadan uzun. Anlaşıldı. Başka bir şey var mı? Ona önceden aldığım bir şapkayı takacağını söylemişti. Beyaz ve siyah bir kurdelesi var. Bulmak kolaya benziyor. Tamam, ben gidip alayım onu şimdi. Teşekkürler. 
Herkese merhaba. Hi everyone. I'm Selin from TurkishClass101.com. Today, I'm going to teach you 10 hardest words to pronounce. The first one is şoför, driver. O, ünlü bir iş adamının özel şoförü. He is the personal driver of a famous businessman. So, um, many Turkish people say şoför, actually, but it's not correct. So, we say ö, ö, but it's actually o, ö. So, it's going to be şoför, not şoför. So, please be careful about that when you're learning Turkish. Meşgul. Busy. Meşgulüm. Sonra konuşalım. I'm busy. Let's talk later. So, we say meşgul usually, and it's also not correct. We say ü, but it's actually u. So, meşgul, not meşgul. So, please be careful about that too. And meşgul is, um, I think, originally from Arabic language, if I'm not wrong. It's also not Turkish word. Japonya. Japan. Japonya'da yaşıyorum. I live in Japan. Um, so I think it is hard to pronounce because many foreigner people, they tend to say Japan, like Japonya. Especially, I heard Japanese people speaking Turkish and they say Japonya, but it's actually Japonya. So, the letter J, we read as J, that is why it is going to be Japonya, not Japonya. Eczane, pharmacy. Eczane çoktan kapanmış. The pharmacy is already closed. So now I will tell you what mistakes we make in Turkish when we say eczane. For example, we say eczane, yazane, eczane, all wrong. The correct one is eczane. I know it's a bit hard to say, but do your best. Şemsiye. Umbrella. Şemsiyemi unuttum. I forgot my umbrella. Actually, it's a very basic word, right? Şemsi, umbrella, but yeah, it's because of the sh voice. I think it is hard to pronounce. Şemsiye, şemsiye. Memnun, content. Hayatımdan memnunum. I'm content with my life. Okay, so this one is um, also uh, not a Turkish word. I mean, the origins are different. It is Egyptian dialect. And I think it is hard to say for us, pronunciation I mean, because there are so many M's and N's in one word. Memnunum. I am content. Hard to pronounce if you are speaking fast. So the correct pronunciation is memnun. Yayla. Plateau. Çoban koyunlarını yaylaya çıkardı. The shepherd took the sheep to the plateau. Actually, we also say plateau in Turkish, not just yayla. There are two words, but both are actually hard to pronounce, yayla and plato. So the correct pronunciation is yayla, yaylalar, plato. Karşılama. Greeting. Harika bir karşılama partisi hazırlayacağız. We will prepare a great welcome party. Um, I think, in my opinion, karşılama is the easiest one in this list. It is not very hard to pronounce. Maybe because of the, again, the sh voice and ı voice, it, it can be hard to pronounce, especially for foreigner people, because I know uh, they don't have the ı voice. I think that is why it is hard to pronounce. Uh, the correct pronunciation is karşılama. It's ı. Karşılama. Su şişesi. Water bottle. Cam su şişeleri daha sağlıklı. Glass water bottles are healthier. This one is even hard for me to pronounce. It is, I think, the hardest one. And in Turkey, we have a, like a tongue twister. We are using this word. So now I will try to, I will try to challenge myself and I will try to say it for you. But if I fail, I'm very sorry. Şu köşe yaz köşesi, şu köşe kış köşesi. Sorry, one more time. Şu köşe yaz köşesi, şu köşe kış köşesi, ortadaki su şişesi. Well, it's almost. Okay. <laughs> this corner is summer corner, and this corner is winter corner, and in the middle, there's a water bottle. <laughs> I know it doesn't make any sense, but since it is hard to pronounce, we have that kind of tongue twister. Şu köşe yaz köşesi, şu köşe kış köşesi, ortadaki su şişesi. Şu köşe yaz köşesi, şu köşe kış köşesi, ortadaki su şişesi. 
Good luck. <gülüyor> Ukala. Know it all. Ukalalık yapma. Stop acting like a know it all. The last vowel, L-A. Usually we say la, but in this word, you need to say it more softer, like la. But you start like like more harder way, like uka, and then you need to end it with more softer way, la. Ukala. I think that is why it is hard to pronounce for us. Okay, that's all for this lesson. I hope you learned a lot about the words that we cannot pronounce. Please try it at home. I'm sure you can do it. And if you want to watch more videos, please visit turkishclass101.com if you want to learn more Turkish. And please don't forget to subscribe our channel. Hi everyone, I'm Selin from turkishclass101.com. Herkese merhaba. Today, I'm going to teach you 10 phrases to amaze native speakers. Okay, so let's amaze me. Geçmiş olsun. Get well soon. The first one is Geçmiş olsun. Get well soon. I think it's a very basic one, right? When I get sick, if you tell me Geçmiş olsun Selin, then I will be very amazed. <laughs> Boş ver. Don't mind. Boş ver. Don't mind. Oh, maybe that's my favorite. So if somebody, if a foreigner comes to me and say Boş ver in my bad mood, then I will be very amazed. Kurt gibi açım. I'm hungry as a wolf. Kurt gibi açım. I'm hungry as a wolf. Um, I'm not sure the, they use this phrase in English. Maybe they don't even use. But it's the exact translation. We use this phrase to make other people understand we are very hungry. Kurt gibi açım. And that's what I am always, all the time. <laughs> ben her zaman kurt gibi açım. It means I am always very hungry. I am always as hungry as a wolf. Beklemekten ağaç oldum. I've turned into a tree while waiting here for so long. Beklemekten Ağaç oldum. I've turned into a three while waiting here so long. I know it doesn't have any meaning in English, uh, but we are using it to make other people understand that we are waiting here for so long time. So we we turn into a three. <laughs> I think it's because like the tree has roots, right? So if if tree wants to live, then it needs its roots, so it's gonna be its home. So it means, now we have roots, now it's our home. So we're waiting here so long time. Like, that is why we're using this phrase. Beklemekten ağaç oldum. I'm a tree now, can you see? Çok yaşa. God bless you. Çok yaşa. God bless you. Um, we say it when we sneeze. Okay, in Turkish, um, çok yaşa doesn't mean God bless you, it's not the direct translation. Uh, it means live long. So when you sneeze, we actually wish you a long life. Çok yaşa. Why we do that? <laughs> ne olur? Please, I beg you. Ne olur? Please, I beg you. Like you want to go somewhere very much and you're asking permission from your mom. Uh, mom, I beg you, just once, let me go. Ne olur, bir kere gideyim. Or, um, like, for example, there is something you want to eat so much. Uh, you want to taste. Then, ne olur, bir kere tadayım. Let me, let me taste once, please, I beg you. Like this. So, not just ne olur itself, but also with the other words and phrases. You can use it together. You can also add, Ne olur ya, ne olur. But it is more like um like a like a daily Turkish. It's not maybe grammatically correct, but we use it. Ne olur ya, ne olur yapayım, ne olur gideyim, or ne olur, ne olur. You really want it badly. It sounds like that. Başım şişti. I've got a headache because of the noise. Başım şişti. I've got a headache because of the noise. Hmm, that's maybe, yeah, it's, it looks like a phrase that the parents use for their children. Başım şişti. 
or uh, like for example somebody listens music very loudly your friend and you're kind of angry like oh my god i have a headache because of that stop it you say başım şişti ya başım şişti like that yeah <laughs> falan filan etc etc falan filan etc etc it's very common in Turkish language. Very, very common. You can use it basically with everything. For example, um, somebody asks you, like, what did you buy from the supermarket? And you say, um, watermelon, fish, um, chips, etc. Then you say, um, let's say, carpus, uh, chips, falan, filan. You say like this. Uh, you're talking about a situation. You're telling your friend like some story or something happened. Like, oh, okay, he went there and then he bought this. And then this happened, etc, etc. Then again, we use falan filan. So now I will speak Turkish. I will to give an example. Um, i̇şe gitmiş, patronu ile konuşmuş, hasta olmuş, eve gelmiş. Falan filan. It means like he went job, he talked with the boss, and then he got sick, he went back home, etc., etc. So you can use like this too. Yok artık. No way, really? Yok artık. No way, really? It shows that you're very surprised with the situation. You cannot believe it. Like yok artık. Or um, like. You're very shocked with the amount of something. Uh, let's say your friend bought five bags. Like she went shopping and she she bought five bags. And you say, yok artık. It's like too much. Did you buy five bags? Ne güzel. How lovely. Ne güzel. How lovely. For example, if you say, what a nice weather. Then you say, ne güzel bir hava. Then it becomes like, how nice, how nice weather. Uh, or if you say, ne güzel bir kız, what a lovely girl. Or one more example, if you say, ne güzel bir hikaye, you say, what a good story. So it has many meanings actually, it depends on where you use the phrase. That's all for today. I hope this video will be helpful for you. So um, tell me which phrase would you use to amaze me. So falan filan, like etc etc. I think if I hear this from a foreign people, then I think I will be very amazed. So tell me your ideas about it. And if you want to watch more videos, please don't forget to subscribe our channel if you want to learn Turkish more then please visit turkishclass101.com I hope to see you guys in the next time, in the next video. Bye bye, take care. To master a new language and understand everything as soon as you hear it, to read with just a quick glance and speak smoothly without thinking, you need to review. Here are our top five review tactics. Number one, listen to examples over and over again. By listening closely and often, you start to pick up the rhythm of a language, as well as correct pronunciation from a native speaker. Use our line-by-line -line feature that lets you both listen and read along. Use this tool to practice as much as possible. Number two, use our voice recording tool to master perfect pronunciation. Record yourself and compare it against the native speaker. If you sound different, then repeat after the native speaker until you're able to match them. Use our voice recording feature, which makes recording super easy. Number three, master your recorded conversations. Record conversations and go over them again and again. Master entire conversations and repeat them line by line. Use any of the dialogues available for download on our website. These come with transcripts of the entire conversation. 
Number four, use mobile devices to reinforce previously learned conversations. Constant review is the best way to progress in your language studies. Download the recorded dialogue to your mobile device and incorporate it into your music playlist. Quick reviews throughout the day effectively reinforce what you've learned. Number five, read with line-by-line -line notes. Read along with a native speaker to really master pronunciation and natural intonation. You should start slow at first, then slowly increase your speed. Your pronunciation will become more natural. You will also see that your ability to understand fluent speakers will greatly increase. You'll be able to improve your communication skills using these five simple review techniques. Bir adam ve kadın konuşuyorlar. Adam ve kadın ilk olarak ne yapacaklar? Bugün ne yapmak istersin? Filme gitmek istiyorum. Ben de televizyonda beyzbol maçı izlemek istiyorum. Ayrıca alışverişe de gitmek istiyorum. Maç birde başlayacak. O zaman önce filme gidelim. Sonra beyzbol maçını izleyebilirsin. Tamam. Alışverişe de akşam gideriz o zaman. Adam ve kadın ilk olarak ne yapacaklar? Bir adam ve kadın konuşuyorlar. Adam ve kadın ilk olarak ne yapacaklar? Bugün ne yapmak istersin? Filme gitmek istiyorum. Ben de televizyonda beyzbol maçı izlemek istiyorum. Ayrıca alışverişe de gitmek istiyorum. Maç birde başlayacak. O zaman önce filme gidelim. Sonra beyzbol maçını izleyebilirsin. Tamam. Alışverişe de akşam gideriz o zaman. Want to speak real Turkish from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at turkishclass101.com. Hi everyone, I'm Celine and today we're going to talk about 15 favorite words in Turkish chosen by fans. Okay, let's see. Merhaba. Hello. Merhaba. Hello. Okay, let's say I am a Turkish lady and you are trying to approach me, okay? Merhaba. Merhaba. <laughs> That's usual me. I do like that all the time. Adın ne? Selin. Senin adın ne? Benim adım. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Arkadaş. Friend. Arkadaş. Friend. Sen benim en iyi arkadaşımsın. You're my best friend. So my best friend is Osman. And I'm sure I talked about him before in my previous videos. So recently uh, I didn't call him very much and I think he's a bit sad about that. So I'm very sorry. Uh, Osman, sen benim en iyi arkadaşımsın. Güzel. Beautiful. Güzel. Beautiful. Ne kadar güzel değil mi? Let me show something. Ne kadar güzel değil mi? Isn't it beautiful? Oh, look at this beautiful face. So we use güzel for objects or for people. So you can use it for people too. Like, oh, ne kadar güzelsin. You're so beautiful. Like that. Uyumak. To sleep. Uyumak. To sleep. Derste uyumak yasak. It's forbidden to sleep during the lesson. But we all did. Right? Let's confess. Do you know the story Sleeping Beauty? Do you know how we say in Turkish? Uyuyan güzel. Güzel, do you remember this word? Mutlu. Happy. Mutlu. Happy. Çok mutluyum. I am so happy. Kahve. Kofi. Kahve. Kofi. Kahve içer misin? Would you like some coffee? Do you know Turkish coffee, everyone? It's pretty famous actually. It tastes like espresso a bit. They serve it in a very small cup and you drink it just like espresso. And after you finish your coffee, 
Uh, somebody can do fortune telling for you. Uh, üç vakte kadar bir kısmet var. Sana. Harika. Awesome. Harika. Awesome. Harika bir fikrim var. I have an awesome idea. So another famous story, Alice in Wonderland. We use harika for Wonderland. So it goes like that. Alice, harikalar diyarında. Harikalar diyarı, it's Wonderland in Turkish. Saygı duymak, to respect. Saygı duymak, to respect. İnsanların seçimlerine saygı duymalıyız. We should respect people's choices. İnanmak, to believe. İnanmak, to believe. Ben senin başaracağına inanıyorum. I believe you will succeed. I believe you will learn Turkish. So, ben senin başaracağına inanıyorum. Sağlıklı, healthy. Sağlıklı, healthy. Sağlıklı bir yaşam için spor şart. For a healthy life, exercise is a must. Ah. Sevgi, love. Sevgi, love. Tek ihtiyacın olan şey sevgi. <gülüyor> All you need is love and respect. Teşekkürler. Thanks. Teşekkürler. Thanks. We also say teşekkür ederim. It also means thank you. So, teşekkürler. Teşekkür ederim. Sağ ol. Para. Money. Para. Money. Para mutluluğu satın alabilir mi? Can money buy happiness? What do you think? Can it buy? Tatil. Vacation. Tatil. Vacation. Önümüzdeki hafta tatile çıkmayı planlıyorum. I plan to go on a vacation next week. I don't plan. I have to work and work and work. I have to shoot videos for you. <laughs> Misafirperverlik. Hospitality. Okay, this one is a bit hard, I think, but I know you can do it. Misafir perverlik. Hospitality. Misafir perverlik, Türk kültürünün önemli bir parçasıdır. Hospitality is an important aspect of Turkish culture. Yeah, we love <laughs> everyone. And um, I heard that from many of my foreigner friends when they went to Turkey. Um, they said the people were very friendly and helpful. So I think if you get lost or if you have any problem, then I'm sure many Turkish people will be very willing to help you. So don't worry. Okay, so we've finished. How do you feel? Do you think you can remember all of them? So if you want to watch more videos, then please subscribe our channel. And don't forget to visit our website, TurkishClass101.com. Hi everyone, I'm Celine from TurkishClass101.com. Herkese merhaba. Today, we will be talking about 10 questions you should know. Okay, let's start with the most basic one. Adın ne? What's your name? Adın ne? What's your name? Benim adım Selin. Senin adın ne? My name is Celine. What's your name? Nasılsın? How are you? Nasılsın? How are you? I think it is important to know this sentence because we usually ask each other how are you, how is going, so please know that one. Nasılsın? Ben iyiyim. Sen nasılsın? I'm good. How are you? Nerelisin? Where are you from? Nerelisin? Where are you from? Especially Turkish grandmothers, they ask a lot about this question because like, of course not the country, I mean the city. Where are you from? Which city? Like, because they want to know everything, right? So I'm sure you'll hear this phrase a lot if you go to Turkey. Nerelisin? Nerelisin? Where are you from? Ben Antalyalıyım. Sen nerelisin? I'm from Antalya. Where are you from? Doğum günün ne zaman? When is your birthday? 
Doğum günün ne zaman? When is your birthday? Benim doğum günüm 16 Ağustos. My birthday is August 16. Senin doğum günün ne zaman? When is your birthday? Nerede yaşıyorsun? Where do you live? Nerede yaşıyorsun? Where do you live? Ben Antalya'da yaşıyorum. Sen nerede yaşıyorsun? I live in Antalya. Where do you live? Nerede çalışıyorsun? Where do you work? The next one is Nerede çalışıyorsun? Where do you work? Ben otelde çalışıyorum. Sen nerede çalışıyorsun? I work in a hotel. Where do you work? Telefon numaran ne? What's your phone number? Telefon numaran ne? What is your phone number? Well, don't accept from me to say my phone number. <laughs> But actually, if you if you want to become with a Turkish person, then you ask like after after some chat, you ask the phone number usually, right? Like, oh, what is your phone number? So we can talk. But nowadays, I think people usually ask, do you have Facebook <laughs> or do you have WhatsApp like this? Uh, and you can ask in Turkish like this. Facebook kullanıyor musun? WhatsApp kullanıyor musun? It means like, do you have Facebook? Are you using Facebook? I think it's more natural nowadays to say in Turkish if you wanna if you wanna become friends with someone. Türkçe nerede öğrendin? Where did you learn Turkish? Türkçe nerede öğrendin? Where did you learn Turkish? Türkçe benim ana dilim. Sen Türkçe nerede öğrendin? Turkish is my mother tongue. Where did you learn Turkish? Çok güzel konuşuyorsun. You speak very well. Türk yemeklerini seviyor musun? Do you like Turkish food? Türk yemeklerini seviyor musun? Do you like Turkish food? Evet, Türk yemeklerini seviyorum. En çok sarmayı seviyorum. Yes, I like Turkish foods. And my favorite is sarma. Do you know sarma? Sarma is like cabbage roll or grape roll. So you stuff and wrap like leaves and you put meat or rice inside. It's a very delicious Turkish food. Türk yemeklerini seviyor musunuz? En sevdiğiniz Türk yemeği ne? What is your favorite Turkish food? Kaç yaşındasın? How old are you? Kaç yaşındasın? How old are you? 26 yaşındayım. Sen kaç yaşındasın? I am 26 years old. How old are you? So we're done for today. Congrats. Now you know 10 questions you should know in Turkish. Tell me all the answers to my questions. I'll be waiting and I hope to see you next time. Please don't forget to subscribe our channel. And if you want to learn more Turkish, please visit turkishclass101.com. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.